Hi everybody, this is Random Fix, and in California, in order to get your tags every two years, you gotta go get the vehicle smogged. So this vehicle had a check engine light on for something. I went ahead and fixed the issue, cleared the code, and then I set all the drive monitors. So in this video today, I'm gonna show you guys what I do before I go down to the smog station. I'm gonna give you guys some helpful tips along the way. And lastly, I'm gonna take the vehicle over to the smog station, let you guys see whatever I can go ahead and record for you guys. So that way you guys will get a better idea about this whole process. And I'll give you guys a bunch of links and other things that you can use to get your vehicle smogged. So stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome to Random Fix. In this video today, we're gonna to go get this 2013 Nissan Altima smogged. And this vehicle has an issue where the check engine light turns on for the mass airflow sensor. I've already went and replaced it and I have no idea what's going on. However, I don't wanna spend any more time troubleshooting this. I just need to go ahead and get the registration and the tags for this vehicle. So if you guys want videos on how to diagnose this and using scan tools, I'll have links to videos like that in the video box below. In this video, we just wanna go ahead and get the vehicle to pass smog so we can get our tags. And let me show you guys how to do this now. So we're in the vehicle now and the ignition is on and the engine is off. And I hooked up one of these scan tools right here. These are about $30. And when you hook up the scan tool, it has this button right here, which stands for inspection monitors. When you hit the button, you can see all the monitors are currently ready. All monitors are required for it to pass smog, except for the EVAP currently in California. And I don't have any check engine lights or anything else on. So this is good news for me. And stay with me as I take you guys down to the smog station and I'll share with you guys some tips that I use to make sure that this does not trigger a check engine light as I'm actually doing the smog because this could be a big old hassle and I gotta go drive it another two or 300 miles. Stay tuned. All right, guys, let's get this thing smogged. So now we are driving to the smog station. And one thing I wanted to point out is the right thing to do, guys, is to go ahead and fix the actual reason for the check engine light turning on. And sometimes that's gonna be an easy fix where you just need to replace a sensor. Other times, if it's like a catalytic converter, you're gonna have to go replace a very expensive component. And in California, catalytic converters can run you from a thousand to four thousand dollars, depending on how many catalytic converters you have. So this is not an easy repair for everybody to afford. And honestly, the only solution for a bad catalytic converter is gonna be a new catalytic converter. There's gonna be products out there that you can try. I have a bunch of hacks and different tricks that you can go ahead and use. So the reason that a lot of these older vehicles are not passing smog is because the components basically get weaker and weaker as time goes on. The more miles you have on the vehicle, the less likely it is to go ahead and pass in the future. So this vehicle has about 90,000 miles. And if your vehicle has higher miles, let's just say you have a 2000 Toyota Corolla and it's got 400,000 miles, there's a pretty good chance that your catalytic converter is not gonna get ready for the inspections and you're gonna have to figure something out. And if you're lucky enough not to live in California and you live somewhere that has the 49 state emissions, you can get a catalytic converter for, for $200. In California, that is not the case and we really have to pay up for everything. So I'm making this video because I know a lot of people are basically just getting by and I hope this video does help them out and they're able to go and find some peace and get themselves to the next two year period and put themselves in a better situation. And let's talk about some of the rules for emissions because I know these rules are put in place to go ahead and protect the earth and the environment. However, there's a lot of great vehicles that are basically being sent to the junkyard because they don't pass smog. And I think this is such a crime, guys. I know they make it sound like it's good for the environment, but basically salvaging a vehicle because the monitors do not get ready. However, the emissions out the tailpipe are good. Should literally be a crime, but it's not. And in California, if you have a vehicle that is not getting ready, you can ask for a two year wave year. And after the two years, what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna basically have to go and junk that car 
or you could sell it to somebody in Florida. In Florida, there's no emissions, for example, and there might be other states like that too. And I'm really passionate about helping people with their emissions related issues. As when I was younger, I probably bought about 10,000 cars at car dealerships. And a lot of times they came with dead batteries and the monitors were not set. So I had to get so good at these drive cycles. And I have a drive cycle for pretty much every make. If you guys check the video link down below, you guys will find your make there and just follow the directions. And also at the end of this video, I'm gonna put it for you guys, the actual video of the drive cycle. So you guys can get an idea of how this whole system works. And if I had to make a summary of what the inspection monitors are, is gonna be this. They're parameters that the OEM manufacturer or the vehicle brand put in place to go and have the vehicle meet before that monitor gets set. So there's oxygen sensors, there's gonna be EVAP systems, catalytic converters, and you have to meet a certain parameter and sometimes the vehicle dealer can't even help you out. They basically tell you just to keep driving. And think about it, you're basically gonna be driving for up to 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 miles to go and get the monitors ready. When they don't give you a detailed outline of what exactly they want you to do. And if you happen to have something like a Porsche, luckily some advanced shops have scan tools that can go and put it in test mode and you can get your vehicle to basically meet the requirements for getting the monitors ready. However, this is not always the case with every vehicle make. So keep that in mind. And what's gonna happen now is when I get to the smog station, I'm gonna do a couple of things, which I'm gonna go ahead and share with you to increase my odds of success. I have already checked all the monitors. All the monitors are ready. Second, there's gonna be no pending codes. So a pending code is a code that basically is detected by the computer. However, it has not confirmed it. Why this is important is because a pending code can basically keep your monitors from getting ready. And if you have a pending code, if you take it down to the smog station, what's gonna most likely happen is the technician's gonna go pull out one of these, even though you can pass and all your monitors are ready, but there's a pending code, the technician's gonna start really getting weird on you and start snooping around the vehicle even more and this might be not a good experience or he can tell you that his machine is not currently working i've seen it guys this does happen because what happens is it's a stupid system that basically the california air resource board has put in place where the technician is basically going to be losing points for passing your vehicle even though it can pass and it goes against their statistics so keep that in mind and if that does happen to you guys just drive to the next smog station and don't worry about it you're not going to try to go and change somebody's mind it's never the case the third thing i'm going to do now at the smog station is i'm going to go ahead and leave my vehicle running and this is really important on vehicles that are 2000 and older as they're going to go and actually do the sniffer test here in california if your vehicle is 2000 and newer, they're just gonna check the OBD2 port where this connected and make sure all the monitors are ready. They're also gonna do a visual. So they're gonna make sure your catalytic converter is there. They're gonna make sure that your intake is stock and see if there's any kind of modifications, cracked hoses. And they're also gonna do a snap test. So they're gonna give the vehicle just a little bit of gas really quickly to see if there's gonna be any smoke that comes out the tailpipe as your vehicle might be burning oil. And this is especially true of diesel vehicles. They do a lot harder of a snap test on diesel vehicles just because diesels pollute a little bit more if they're not running right. And the fourth thing to do in case you have a vehicle that's 2000 and older is to make sure your gas tank is not completely empty as the technician sometimes has to go put special gas in the vehicle and this gas is very expensive. And they sometimes don't wanna go ahead and do a smog in case your tank is gonna be empty. So you're not gonna get the best treatment. You wanna go there with at least half a tank to three quarters of a tank and make sure you take away all reasons for the technician to snoop around. So if you have a special harness with the on and off switch, they may start digging in to see why that harness is there. They might think it's for a tuner, maybe for a programmer 
and they want the vehicle to be stocked to go ahead and pass. And if you do have any alterations on your vehicle, make sure you have an executive order or a carb number attached to that actual capote. And if you did make an alteration to the vehicle, such as the intake, and you don't have the carb number, what you can do is take a picture of the component and send it over to the manufacturer and they'll send you that little sticker. And if you have a great smog technician, they can actually look up the executive order and that doesn't take a long time. However, not many technicians actually want to do that. So we are here. I am looking for this shop and trying to locate it. Yeah, I can't find it. I'm gonna have to go ahead and Google where the shop is. And I'm going to the shop because smogs currently in California are over a hundred dollars, which is crazy as they used to cost 20, 30, 40, 50. Now they're at a hundred. Hey guys, we're pulling up here to the smog station. I found it. Make sure you put your scan tool away like this. You do not want to leave that out. And when I get there, I'm going to go ahead and leave the car running. So the vehicle is running. He's plugging it in now. And he's going to hook it up to the computer. Since a 2000 and newer vehicle, they're not going to do a Swiffer test. They're just going to check the onboard diagnostic system to make sure all the monitors are ready which we confirmed before we came. So this should be nice and simple. My number one uh, videos are for you. Yeah. I think I have like 60, 60 smog videos with all the different drive cycles for every make. Cause you know, they, they junk a lot of cars that are perfectly fine. Cause the stupid monitors don't get ready. Yeah. It's crazy. That's why they didn't make it easy now. If it's not easy, it's not gonna pass the smog and they cannot do Mickey Mouse number. 2010 and up, it has a code uh, on the computer, it won't pass either. Are you talking about a permanent? Yeah. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. Before it was passing, it as soon as the monitor is ready. Now he's gonna open up the hood and make sure everything is gonna be stock. So he's checking for cracked hoses, intakes, and what other stuff are you checking for? Aftermarket parts. Aftermarket parts. Just cause we're in California. Yeah. <laughs> Aftermarket has to have a label. Uh, legal in California. Yeah. Oh, also, he's gonna, they're going to check for headers, see if anybody replaced the exhaust pipes that are coming yeah. out, intake. Yeah. yeah. And if you have any yeah, special... Worker. Yeah, they're going to... Sometimes they check underneath, too. Like this, to make sure the catalytic converter is there. And you're not looking for mufflers, right? No. Mufflers are here. They're gonna put the mileage in now, and this is gonna report on Carfax here. So make sure that your mileage is correct. If they make any typos, it's gonna affect you. So make sure you make it easy for them by having the right trip screen on the display. If your car has a recall, it shows there, you can go take care of it at the DMV, at the and dealer. In California, they currently have a recall database. And the reason this is important is if the recall is emissions related, you sometimes have to complete this before they can pass the car, right? If it's emissions related? Okay. Sometimes they put it to my nickname. It says oh. it's uh, suspended DB. You have yeah. to go and then fix it, then you can go to the They put on hold. So if the recall is emissions related, basically they're going to get a line on the bottom here letting them know that they can't proceed. And right now it's collecting the data from the monitors. And when everything is good, we're going to go ahead and get a thumbs up that we passed. And this is the reason you gotta watch out for doing a hot smog. The technician that takes a chance like this, they already know the vehicle's been. Now it's actually running some sort of test, which is interesting. They do a you test want, now? Yeah. Uh, yes. So I haven't seen I haven't seen this before on a on a newer vehicle. The RPM test. Test is complete now. Done? And now we have to spend time at least 10 15 minutes to do smog. Check that out guys, we gotta pass. Hey everybody, we passed. We are good to go on this vehicle. And as you guys saw, there is gonna be a few new steps in the smog cycle as far as the RPM test. So that's new. I haven't seen that before on a 2000 and newer vehicle. And this is gonna keep changing as time goes on. And if you guys got any questions, please leave them down below. I'll leave you guys with the video for the drive cycle up here. 
and also the whole smog tips playlist right here for your own vehicle make you guys will find the exact drive cycle in the video description box down below make it a great day and we'll see you on the next one thanks